Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. In 2024, Russia suddenly dropped a blockbuster, the first domestically produced lithography machine was officially unveiled, capable of handling chips with a 350 nanometer process. As soon as the news came out, the global semiconductor industry exploded. Especially ASML in the Netherlands, as the leader in the lithography machine market, probably felt mixed emotions. Although 350 nanometers sounds like an antique, Russia's move has brought new variables to the global chip industry landscape. Not to mention, this may be the situation that ASML is most reluctant to see a new player has squeezed into their territory, even if it is only in the mid to low end market now. The appearance of Russia's domestically produced lithography machine, a breakthrough from zero to one. Vasily Shpak, Deputy Minister of Industry and Trade of Russia, announced at the 2024 Russian Digital Industry Exhibition that their first domestically produced lithography machine has been built and is now in the testing phase. This machine can produce chips with a 350 nanometer process. What is 350 nanometers? Simply put, the width of the line on the chip can reach 35 billionths of a meter. Don't think it's backward. Compared with the 5 nanometer and 3 nanometer chips in Apple's current mobile phones, it is indeed ancient technology. But for Russia, this is a big event, a leap from zero to one. Russia's chip industry has always been a shortcoming, especially since the outbreak of the Russian-Ukrainian conflict in 2022. Western countries' technical sanctions against Russia have directly blocked the road to import chips and equipment. The military industry is the first to bear the brunt, and things like radars and communication systems are all supported by chips. What should I do if there is no stock? In the past, I could buy it from abroad, but now I can only rely on myself. So, the Russian government spent a lot of money, spent billions of rubles, and convened a group of scientific research experts. After two years of holding back, they finally made this 350 nanometer lithography machine. This lithography machine uses deep ultraviolet DUV, technology, which can carve 350 nanometer patterns on silicon wafers. To be honest, this technology is already outdated in the global market. More than 20 years ago, Intel was still using this process to make Pentium processors, but now no one is using it anymore. But for Russia, it has special significance. Many old military equipment, such as radars and missile control systems, use this outdated chip. If you can make it yourself, at least you don't have to look at other people's faces, and you won't be stuck at a critical moment. According to official statements, their goal is to develop a 130 nanometer lithography machine by 2026, and then rush to 14 nanometers by 2030. This plan sounds quite grand, but the difficulty is also rising sharply. From 350 nanometers to 130 nanometers, it may still be possible to rely on existing technology, but 14 nanometers requires extreme ultraviolet EUV technology which is ASML specialty, and Russia is still far from it. However, with the first step, there is finally hope for the road ahead. When it comes to lithography machines, ASML in the Netherlands cannot be avoided. This company is simply the god of the industry, and more than 90% of the world's high-end lithography machines come from them. ASML probably frowned when the Russian 350 nanometer machine was unveiled. Although this technology does not threaten their core market, the potential chain reaction is hard to say. The full name of ASML is ASML, which is headquartered in the Netherlands and specializes in lithography machines. Their equipment is divided into two types, deep ultraviolet DUV and extreme ultraviolet EUV. DUV is low end and can make chips between 130 nanometers and 7 nanometers, EUV is high-end and can handle chips below 7 nanometers, like the current 3 nanometers and 2 nanometers. 
Global chip giants, such as TSMC, Samsung, and Intel, cannot handle advanced processes without ASML's machines. Therefore, ASML has an absolute monopoly in the high-end market. To put it bluntly, 350 nanometers poses no threat to ASML's high-end market. Their EUV equipment is aimed at 5 nanometers and 3 nanometers, and their customers are large manufacturers that make mobile phones, computers, and AI chips. This Russian machine can only meet the needs of its own military industry at most, and it can't even squeeze into the consumer electronics market. But the problem lies in the low-end and mid-range markets. Although ASML's DUV equipment is not the main product, it has a lot of sales, especially in places like China where demand is strong. If Russia really develops 130 nanometers, or even 14 nanometers, it may snatch some low-end orders. What's more troublesome is that Russia's move may lead other countries to follow suit. Many places in the world want to get rid of their dependence on ASML. If everyone starts to build their own machines, how long can ASML's good days last? ASML's financial report shows that in 2023, mainland China's revenue accounted for as much as 46%, becoming their largest funder. Why? Because of US sanctions, China can't buy EUV equipment, so it can only desperately buy DUV and expand mature process production capacity. Old processes, such as 28 nanometers and 45 nanometers, are in great demand. If Russia can gain a foothold in the low end and mid range markets, will China also consider cooperating with Russia? This is not good news for ASML. The sanctions imposed by the United States on Russia and China have forced both countries to embark on the path of localization. China is desperately expanding the production of mature chips, and Russia is developing its own lithography machines. With this trend, the division of the global semiconductor industry is inevitable. In the past, there was a global division of labor, with the United States designing, Taiwan manufacturing, and the Netherlands making equipment. Now all countries want to play on their own, and the industrial chain has to be reshuffled. For Russia, if it can make chips, the military industry does not have to stop, at least it can maintain basic operations. For the global market, with one more supplier, the price of low-end chips may come down. But ASML is having a hard time. Once its market share shrinks, its profits will follow. In the long run, technological autonomy may be a major trend. Whoever masters the core technology will have the right to speak.